what I would like to do is give you a demonstration of the things that you can do with an add-in. So to do that, I'm going to jump over to my browser. And here you see that we're in uh, Salesforce and uh, we're in the Lightning experience. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, a, an app that we've built for a real estate company. And this particular app is composed of four different Lightning components. The first Lightning component is the header at the top. And then we've got a search box, um, a slider component that allows us to filter down our list. And then this list of um, properties indicating um, customers that have liked certain properties so we know which ones are most popular. So those are four components, the house list uh, and then the other two above it. When I click into one of these, for instance, now, what I'm going to see is the detail page for that house, right? And what I want to point out is over on the right-hand side, we've got another lightning component called activities. And so this is a custom component just like the ones that we saw previously. Um, and it's really great because I can click into that activity and what's shown now on my contact page is that same house list component. The only difference is that now because it's in a different context, the list is limited only to those houses that are liked by this contact. So that's, that's really good. Um, it, it shows me this one component that I've built that's being used in two places and it's aware of the context. But as, as we know, uh, if we've got Outlook, uh, we're probably working in our inbox a lot. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, Outlook version of this. And this is on my real estate interest um, tab over here. And what you see now is that activity lightning component running inside of Outlook. It's the exact same component that we saw on the contact detail page or on the property listing page, except now it's limited only to the activities for this contact. Likewise, I can see the houses that uh, that same house list, again, limited to the context of this particular individual. So I'm going to click into another one just to show you how this uh, works. So this has a little longer activity list. And then uh, the, the house list in this case is um, got four houses in it. And you can see that because it's built with Lightning, meant to be responsive, we get a little bit of responsive UI out of it as well. So this is an example of taking some energy and effort that we've done in building an app inside of Salesforce, not necessarily a sales cloud, not necessarily service cloud, but a custom application and bringing that directly into the workflow of the individual within Outlook, which I think is uh, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, Dave, this is, a, I think, a really great example of kind of being able to reuse some of that, the, the web things that you've already spent time and, and put together. Uh, we find a lot of times that a lot of web developers might already have pages in one of their websites that, that could easily be maybe re-leveraged in one of these add-ins. And it's just a matter of, again, framing those the right way and then, and then hooking those in to maybe something so that they are contextual. In your case, it's contextual around who that, that mail is from. So looking that up, and then, um, again, maybe doing a qu query against Salesforce to display that information. So super powerful scenario and, and shows you, you know, how you can easily, you know, re-leverage this uh, work that your developers have maybe, maybe have already done. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing, um, you know, I mentioned the, the similarity between SLDS and Office. Uh, this particular component is styled using SLDS. It looks right at home inside of the Office UI. And you also saw that uh, if I reset my login credentials and then relaunch this guy, uh, I'm given the uh, OAuth, uh, since I've got a cookie, it's already logged in, but uh, it's asking me to uh, allow the OAuth and I can just uh, leverage that as well. So very cool. Okay. Um, so we're about near the end of the webinar. Um, there's a few resources. We're going to fill out a, a few more items in this resource list and share this, um, this deck with you. So you don't necessarily need to uh, write down 
or screenshot these links unless you want to go grab it right now. Um, and one of the things that uh, I'm going to do is put up a tutorial for building that real estate app and uh, creating the Outlook add-in. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the um, Q&A. We've got a couple of minutes here. Uh, let's see. So the first question is, can users upload, download, sync a contact list? Why should or shouldn't they? Uh, in this case, I'm assuming that um, that you're in something like Excel and maybe you want to do some mass updates uh, or, or sync the contacts from Outlook uh, into Salesforce. There's, there's no reason not to do that. Um, I think that uh, generally syncing, once you've got an add-in that allows you to kind of add new contacts as they come into your inbox, um, the, the need for syncing isn't that high. But there's other data. If you think about other types of data as an admin of Salesforce, one of the most popular add-ins um, ever was something called the Excel Connector. Uh, I think it stopped getting updated around version 10 of the API, and we're at version 35 today. Uh, but that was really great for admins to be able to mass update any kind of data. They would bring it into the Excel and then update it and send it back to Salesforce. So that's great. That's actually similar to um, one of the resources links at the end, uh, links to the workshop that we did at Dreamforce this last year. And that's actually kind of the similar scenario. You picked a data set, you got to pull it into Excel, make updates, and it would actually go and say, hey, here's what's changed between the last time you pulled the data from Salesforce and what's in your worksheet, and you could kind of push updates in either direction. So definitely take a look at that if that's what interests you. We certainly have APIs on both the Salesforce and Outlook side to work with contacts, um, but also lots of other data as well. So another, another question really quickly, what if a user wants to leverage or update the contact information to be helpful, uh, but when the individual doesn't own it? And I think this is a question about uh, data access and sharing rules. Whatever sharing rules are uh, you have inside of Salesforce um, will apply to any kind of add-in that you create. Um, for Office as well. So because it's going over the API and uh, the logged in user is the individual, if they don't have access to a contact, then uh, they won't be able to update that contact. So let's go with one more. We're really out of time here. Um, let's do this. One. Let's do the one. Go ahead, Richard. I was going to cover this one. There was one question about what are the impacts of Office 365 versus a non-cloud version of Office. It's a really good question. We get that frequently. When it comes to add-ins, it really, for the most part, it doesn't matter as long as you're on. Uh, now, for like for mail, you do need a certain Exchange server behind the scenes. It needs to be Exchange Server 2013 behind the scenes. Um, and then you do need Office 2013, but as long as you're on 2013 or newer, um, anything, it works both on-premises or the cloud version. It really doesn't matter. Um, there might be some services that work a little bit differently, but for the most part, 2013 is the, the baseline to be at. So uh, we're over time. Um, I promised everyone at the beginning that we would um, address all of these questions and then publish them uh, at a later time. Give us about a week to come up with um, correct and definitive answers for all these and then um, come check back at the landing page for the webinar. Richard, thank you so much for, uh, for helping us with this webinar and uh, bringing the magic of integrating with Office uh, to the community. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.